a divine greetings to the 13 tribes of Israel scattered in the four corners of the earth and to the Gentiles called by the oxen fairy name of Abba Yahuwah Elohim. This is the awesome fairy name that is above all names, eternal. Not Pog Jesus, not Snake Allah, it's Yahuwah. Not Pog Jesus, not Snake Allah, but it's Yahuwah, the only mighty name that is above all other names. That is above every other names. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It's Yahuwah, the only awesome name. That is above every other names. Princess, love Yahuwah. It's okay. So much love Yahuwah. This temple is eternal bond with Yahuwah. The only true name that is above every other name. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Is Yahuwah the only fiery name that is above every other name? Not Pog Jesus, neither Snake Allah. Is Yahuwah the only fiery name that is above every other name? Eternal, forevermore, from everlasting to everlasting. He is the only true name, and that is above every other names. Every other names, yes, every other names. I love Yahuwah so much. Thank you, Abba. You are awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Horrible see Kayaba. Shabbat Shalom. Much love and much prosperity attend your family for you are the only reason of our time like truth because the time is simply near. Just as we see the days goes by, so draw nigh the coming of Yahushua Hamashiach. Just as the Malak of Yehua saith unto Yehukana the revelator. Seal not the prophecies of this book, for the time is simply near. Exactly what we are doing here, family. Decode the end times, prophecy, signs, dreams in, preparing people like your body, like your house, like you, for the blessed returning of King Yahushua Hamishiach, our eternal bridegroom, to whom do eternally our worship, praise, honor, riches, power, glory, wealth, to the glory of his magnificent Abba, Yahuwah, the Almighty, eternal. Hmm, rebobobo see Kayaba. Like I said before, not Pop Jesus, not Snake Allah. Yes, but it's Yahuwah. Hey, rebobobo see Kayaba. Rebobobo see Kayaba is Yahuwah. The only living name that is above every other name. Yes. Every other name, hmm. I love him so much. And to the Ruach HaKodesh, yes, to the Ruach HaKodesh, mm -hmm. to the Ruach HaKodesh, it's an only, a worship goes to the Ruach HaKodesh, forevermore, horrible sea Eternally, oh, worship goes to the Ruach HaKodesh, mm, my eternal husband. To the Ruach HaKodesh, mm, my eternal teacher. To the Ruach HaKodesh, mm, my eternal Savior. Yes, he's my Savior. To the Ruach HaKodesh, mm, my eternal cleanser, all oh, glory goes to the Ruach HaKodesh. I love him also so much. Ruach HaKodesh, mm, Ruach HaKodesh. Yes, 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 Ruach HaKodesh. Sekei Yabo, Ruach HaKodesh. 
Sekei, ia bosei, rua hakodas. Sekei, yes, durei labaio, o rua hakodas. Sekei, ia bosei, durei labasei, imo santa labu, imo yenta labe, wo wo robosi kayabe. Wo wo rabasi ka ya be Wo wo rabasi ka ya be O rabasi ka ya be I love him so much Thank you Abba Yes Abba Yahuwah you have been worshiped praised honored served loved always ever eternal right in this very temple Your Isha your eternal handmaider. Love you so much, Abba, because you are my eternal husband. Also, my Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba, for giving me your set up our spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you for giving me your eternal word, King Yahushua Hamashiach. I love him so, so much. Hallelujah. Reba Bobo Sikayaba. Masekeibo. Whoa, whoa, Karakobo say, Pusendele, Karakobo say, Masendebo Yahuwah, Karakobo say, Karakobo, Karakobo sendebo, Karakobo, Karakobo say, Kebo. Karakabo sendabo yawa Karakabo say Love you so much Abba Hallelujah Hallelujah Thank you for the feast of Pori It's about to get re <laughs> I love you so much All right now family We want to do it again We want to also touch on the very last feast of the year, in fact, of the biblical year, so I have to make it clear, okay? Of the biblical year, so we are already in the last month of the biblical year. So, the last two weeks will we'll be preceding into the biblical new year called 2023. All right, now, so one of these is the last feast, and it carries, it carries so much. It contains so much for the elect. It carry huge, you know, cleansing, purifying effort for the elect. Because Abba Yawa is not just doing a party of to show off, of or of meat and drink, or of a uh, let get together. Mm -mm. Whatever, whatever Abba Yawa is doing has, you know, a deep spiritual significance Abba Yawa means something okay so the kingdom of Yawa as it says is not meat and drink okay so whatever he does not just a feast there is spiritual deep meaning okay the spiritual implication that is what we want to also look into today you know we always touch on on every feast so we are preparing and navigating into the Blebleco New Year, another wonderful feast. Pax Sova. Another Pax Sova. Hallelujah. I just love Abba. Abba to you be all the glory. Ah, to you, hey, be all the honor. Abba to you be all the glory. Be all the honor. Forevermore, forevermore. Yes, here we are in the heavenly courtroom of Abba Yahuwah with this powerful message started for you and me, end of the biblical year, Feast of Pori. This is who I am. Instead of death, life. Instead of shame, honor, and glory. That's it. So that is what our feast actually means. Instead of me to die, you don't want me to die. You are the one to die your death. 
You don't want me to be, you know, put to shame. You are the one to be clothed with your own shame, not me. It simply means return back to sender. Whatever you wish me, it goes back to you in seven ways. Is the nature of this feast. This is when Abba turn things around. He that, you know, build a gallo. We are not the one that we are hanged in his own gallo. You build it for me, you're going down. <laughs> Don't build a gallo where you are not ready to die. Don't build a gallo when you are not ready to die. When you are not ready to die. Mm -hmm. When you are not ready to die. Why should you, you know, build a gallo, dig a grave? And when you are not ready to enter, because it's not for me, <laughs> that is the nature of this feast. There's no way you can set a fire and you say you're not going to be burned. Of course, if you don't want to be burned, don't even play games around fire. It's the nature of this feast. Thank you, Abba. Abba Yehovah, by your Napier son, rebuke every exotic demon that wants to attack Whatever, whatever instrument I'm using to the glory of your name, destroy them all and rebuke that wicked spirit by yourself. In your mighty name, any devil that wants to touch all this instrument I'm using to dig into your goodness, into your ox, in fact, that glory you kept somewhere for your people. Any devil that wants to attack it, to make it difficult for me, I bet you what in your mighty name. Rebuke that devil by yourself in your mighty name. Amen. Christian, the wine tapper, because they always type, they always type from every nonsense on the social media, <laughs> especially when they are on lotion, just display says for into nonsense and not begin to wrap it up, you know, with coded lie. They will begin to type. I type. I type. That man have no shame. That guy, Sulelele, Sulelele. Sulu Oloshu, he has no shame. He said, the people that died in his tent, the seven people that died about a few months ago, is, he said they were part of the plot. They were part of the plot. So Sulena knew, knew how many, oh no. Anyway, let's just leave this aside. So what am I saying? When he was also giving that first testimony, that Bulletproof was, it wasn't what he was, you know, saved his soul that it was God where you were his tablet proof car that uh, they shot they shot they shot they shot at the engine yes you see we are still on we are still able to drive off when you just get to his company the engine just knock ha ah, my father people are beginning to type from this nonsense again so Chris said the power one tapper this should have be uh the the very anointing of yes yeah, the very the very movement anointing yes that breaks you you should have been typing from. You see how Abayewa did it. Hema built a gallon for the people of the book Mordecai. He want Mordecai to die. He don't want to see Mordecai rejoice. He don't want to see Mordecai live. Because Mordecai refused to worship ordinary man. Fearful he want to die. He just want that man to be, you know, what out of this planet. He now went to go and build this gallon. You want to hunt mother car? You see, I bet you want to turn it around. This is what I'm typing from. But this is also what you should have been typing from. If you follow this feast, you are typing from it. You are, you are typing from the movement. From that power, I bet you want to lift upon the camp of the enemy. That whosoever that wants you die, he will die in, the, in your own stand. So this should have been what you know reasonable person should have been typing from. Not the shame and disgrace of Sulilili. You know. So we want to put uh preset it now, scripture. Revelation chapter one, verses three. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the prophecies. Okay, no, let me take it again. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Pork eighty people. Christian, they said their Jesus destroyed their head, not us, okay, not our royal law. So, what is this saying? There are still leftover prophecies in this book. 
that as you read it, you keep it. That is you watch for it. That is you wait for it. That is you believe it. You prayed and say, let it be fulfilled also in my own life. Because there are still prophecies left over. So these are the some of the prophecies because whatever, whatever that has beginning also have final. Okay. This is the very final feast of it all. And this feast represents um, anti-Messiah movement. It represents mark of the beast movement. It represents familiar spirit. It represents that old serpent that knew us too well. It also represents the judgment of uh, how uh, uh, the serpent deceived the man, the very first man, our Papa Adam. And the judgment that came after the falling. Because this feast started from a, a First Samuel chapter 15. I think I'm correct. Or second Samuel. No, first Samuel, excuse me. First Shemu chapter 15. Where Abeyewa, whereby I sent the first dynasty. Is it the yeah, it was the first dynasty, yes. King Saul to go and wipe out all tally the Agagites family. And it's also being found in Deuteronomy where Abba Yehua said that it should be jotted down that every single Amalekite will be wiped off. Now, I, according to the law, Moses jotted down. I think it's Deuteronomy. I forgot it. But we are not going to... I, I just want to start telling from there. In fact, this Amalekite problem started from Genesis or so. I've done that, but I forgot the scripture, the, 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 the very uh, uh, chapter. I just want to brief it a little bit. So this has, this is the problem that begins right from the beginning about the Amalekai and all that. Now, in first King, the very first Samuel, the very one that I can really, really point it to now, whereby Abba Yawana said unto when if the Jacob be enough field, Abba Yawana sent uh, uh King Saul to go and wipe every single thing out. Spend none. So when he got there, he now did as he wants. He killed whatever he wants to keep. He spared the one he wants to spare. He also kept some for himself. That is where this prophet came. Obe to obey is better than to sacrifice. Okay, so that's where he came from. So the very king he left, Agagar, Hema was the uh, seed of Agaga. Hema the Agaga, you're going to see that right in chapter 2 of Esther chapter 1, Esther, Esther chapter 2, okay. So Mordecai refused to bow, although Adam did not refuse to bow to the serpent, but Mordecai said this time we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. I will not bow to you. Mm -hmm. So for that, he now pay huge amount of money into the king's Ahasuerus uh, treasuries, to wipe out every single Yahudim, every single uh, people of the book, he wanted to commit this wicked genocide. Okay, so that is uh, the book of Esther, chapter 4, way down to chapter 9. Okay, he wanted to do this wickedness. Abba Yewana came into the system through the prayer of a woman, Queen Adasa. Okay, Abayawa came into the system and not turn every single nonsense of Agagite upon Agagite's head. His ten sons go down the grave. He himself, pure, he used his whole head to carry um, what he intended for Mordecai. Why? Because Mordecai said no. If only you can say no to wickedness. If only you can say no to, 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 to say no to the teachings of devils. If only you can say no to anything that contradicts the royal law. What will ever stop your Hema not to go down? What will ever stop your Ega guy not to go down? Everything. Any contract. In fact, you see from the first Samuel chapter 16, we see the causes now begin to grow high and grow high. And what are we saying? This is the enemy that knew us. Familiar. When they are talking about familiar spirit, this is it. Enemy that knew your papa, that knew your great 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 grandfather and great 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 grandmother, that is still working in the family. 
in this period they go down. Why? Because Mordecai said no to nonsense, no to man's adultery. Now, what is the fulfillment of this feast? It is simply Sharia law. This is the last to go. Abbe will have nice feast. Two, uh, seven is for plans of salvation. You're going to see that in um, Leviticus 23. All plans of salvation. Two is for war. Two is to pay back into the bosom of the enemy what they did to the people of the book. Two is for war. Like I said, judgment, destruction. To devils and his people. That is what, and this is the last one. This is, this is, this is the Sharia law. To wipe out every single person that believes the ways of Yehovah. Then what happened? Mordecai stood his ground and said, no way. I'm not going to bow to you. I'd rather die than to do that. Fear for me when I came into the system. So, so the Sharia law is so. It is coming to wipe out every single thing that renounce and say they will not take the mark of the beast. That say they will not worship Allah. That say they will not convert to Islam. You will be gone. But it said endure until the end. Even though you lose your life, you're going to find it again. What are we saying? It is the last judgment upon this planet. So, I, I brief it already. We want to do today. I just want to touch. Not just I just want to. When I bet you what begin to take me through this message, it was kind of a question, question all through. So we want to start with those question, question all through. So I gave you the place already. Adasa, the one they call Esther, chapter four, chapter five. Chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9. You will see all whatever I want to speak on now over there. So because this feast came from there. Okay, it's our last feast. It's the last feast of the year. The very end of Sharia law. When he himself is going to wipe everything out. Mm -hmm. So this is this the prophecy we are see watching for. Because this feast still had, <laughs> uh, have it for females. Fulfillment in Yahushua Hamashiach. Yahushua Hamashiach is the one to consummate this feast. Why did Abba Yahweh give it to us? He gave it unto us for a memory, a memorial, so that we don't forget it, so that we won't forget it. Whatever, whatever you celebrate is not going to be a part of it. So that is why Abba Yahweh commands us every year, <coughs> excuse me, to be celebrating this feast because it still have <coughs> its fulfillment. In the end of all, he himself, Yahushua Hamishia, that is Revelation 19. You're going to see he's coming with his whole army. They are the one to wipe out because the family of Agagite is in the whole world. In fact, Agagite family covered the whole surface of the earth. The Amalekite covered the surface of the earth. We know who is Amalekite. They cover the surface of the earth. In fact, they are the one ruling. They have the upper one, upper hand. So they are bringing our people into nonsense. Like John Slimer is a gaga. It's, it's, it's Amalaka. He needs to go down. Oh, Jesus Christ, Pastor. Jesus Christ, the Pope of Jesus, is Amalaka. He needs to die like Emma. And all oh, Jesus Christ, Pastor, they are all oh, Emma. Uh, they needs to go down because they are bringing Mordecai into their nonsense. Okay? So, let's suppose some more. The question Abba Yawa asked me all through in this message. It was kind of fun. I say, ah, it's first time I'm seeing this kind of a topic, topic, talk, topic. Now, Revelation chapter two verses nine. Okay, let's quickly read that since we are start. We start already. Revelation two nine because him I thought is above. He is the divine. Mm -hmm. Read chapter five. You're gonna understand what I'm saying here. Whereby the king said he want to promote somebody. He want to elevate somebody. You want to bless somebody? Ah, a man I say, of course. I am the one. <laughs> I literally didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> oh, my father. The very good man, he won't die. He, the very good man, he wants to die. He, he wished him to die. What am I saying? The very good man. He wished death to. Literally did he know. It's also that same good man that is going to be promoted in his presence. Before his eyes are. This is what is with me. And that was the question about your wife was just asking me. Revelation 2 9. I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Yahudims and are not, 
but at the synagogue of Satan. Now, we are always in the midst of the synagogue of Satan. And this synagogue of Satan is going to be elevating themselves, hide themselves, you know, promoting themselves. And in fact, they're going to say, you are their houseboy or you are their house girl. You are on the dead. They are above you. So they're going to be, you know, you know, uh, uh, claiming uh, um, lordship over you, headship over you, superiority over you. You are just so inferior. You know, they, that is, they put themselves in the very high mountain before you. Yahushua said, don't worry. Like Mordecai, you are a gate man. Haman was the second in command in the kingdom of Ahasuerus. In the city of Shusha, he was the second, like vice president. And Mordecai was just a common gate man. Yet, he still never let that man be. He still want to torment him. That man is in his, you know, seat of punishment. You still want to add more sorrow. In fact, you say you don't want to see him anymore. You have problem with common gate man. And that is who we are today. Even we are here living so, you know, you know, so, so little, living on the, on the little strength we have. But the wealthy people, the people that said they have it all, they still don't want to see us live. Now, Yahushua said, don't worry. Don't just worry. I'm going to demote them like he demote Hema. And I gave that seat to Mordecai. It's the nature of this feast. And when we also go to chapter 3, the same. The people that thought that they are top, he said, I'm going to bring all of that down. Because you are the choosy. We are in the spiritual Babylon, mystery Babylon, Revelation 17. Here is Babylon, the literal Babylon, where this happened in the land of our slavery, in the, in the land of our slavery. But again, we are also in the land, the final slavery. In the mystery Babylon. Now Revelation 3 9. Behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are. Yeah, they will say we are on top of you king. And are not. You are not. You are so wretched. You think you are rich. Yeah what say you are so so poor. But the lie. Behold. I will make them to come. And worship before thy feet. Uh -uh. How did they make that what happened? Read chapter 5. Esther chapter 5 or chapter 6, I will be sure. How did they make Hema to come and worship at the feet of Mordecai? How did it happen? Whereby the king, okay, let me be sure. That 5 or 6. I need to get it right. All right, yes, it's chapter 6, okay. That night, the king could not sleep, so he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his uh, reign, to be brought to be brought. To be brought in and read to him. And it was found, recorded there, that Mordecai has done some, okay, had exposed, okay, those that wanted to assassinate him. Okay, see what the king said for them. And the king said, Who is in the court? After the king found out and said, Oh, this guy wants to save my life. And meanwhile, Hema is coming to say to the king, I have already built the gallows for Mordecai to die. Let's say everything worked together for our good, okay? And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Hema had just entered the court, uh, the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about hanging by the car on the gallow he had erected for him. <laughs> Five. His attendant uh, answered, Hema is sit, uh, standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. Six. When Hema entered, the king asked him what should be done for the man the king uh, delights to honor. Now Hema thought to himself, who is there that the king would honor rather than me? <laughs> See what he said. Have them brought. Look, he want to give counsel now to the king. Have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a, and a horse. The king has rode in, one with a royal crest, uh, a, a crest placed on his okay head. Then led the rope and the horse 
be entrusted to one of the king's most noble prince, let them, <laughs> oh my father, <laughs> let them rob the ma, uh, rob the ma, the king delights to honor, and lead him on the horse, um, on the horse, through the city, uh, city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the ma, the king delighted to honor. The king now said, "Come on now, get that for Mordecai." <laughs> this is how he make your enemy to powder and worship at your feet. Now stand. Go at once, the king commanded Hema. Get the rope and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai, the Yahudim who sat at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. It was so. He said, you are the most noble because you are the second in command. After me in this kingdom, it's you. So you said that, that uh, the, the person that the king wants to honor must be entrusted and must be you know, led throughout the city uh, streets. And you're going to be proclaiming, see how the king has rewarded this person. He said, you are the one to do that. You see how Abba Yewa turned it around? So this should have been what somebody should have been typing from. That any enemy that build a gallow, or grave and all that, this is how you must celebrate me. After you finish celebrating me, you will not enter your grave. You must see me on top before you enter your grave. You must proclaim my, my, you know, my, my promotion and my elevation before you just go down the grave. So this is how Yahushua fulfilled that very particular. But let me read it again. Verses 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Yahudims and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. And who is Yahushua? Is the king of kings. And who is Ahasuerus? The king of Persia. He said, they're going to say how much I love you. Uh, is that not what Mordecai uh, Hema saw in Mordecai case? Hema saw that how Hema saw with his own naked eyes how much the king Ahasuerus loved this poor man, this gate man, this husband. Eh? So me, your most noble man, I'm the one to announce your love for this very my enemy. The king said, "Do it, eh? Don't neglect." Any. So this is the nature of this feast, okay? So now, let's see, dig more. Like the title says, You are great, Rabbi Sekeo, Yahuwah. You are great. You are great, Orobo Saint de Labo. Orobo Seke Yabe. You are great. You are great, Orobo Saint de Labo, Yahuwah. You are great. You are great. You are great, Rabo Sandeo, Yahuwah. You are great. You are great, Orobo Santa Labu. He must labe. You are great. You are great, Rabo Sandeo. Yes, you are great. You are great, Baba. Mm, you are great. You are great, Yahuwah. You are great, Yahuwah. Yeah, you are great. Yes, yes, yes. You are great. You are great. Ha, hallelujah. Hallelujah. No time. We are running out of time. Thank you, Abba. Now, quickly, let's see another part. The question, question, question. Abba, you are keep throwing at me. I quickly want to put that now. In the case of Joseph, Genesis 15, verses 20. He said, you meant it for evil. Abayawa turned it around for good. If you really want to know how Abayawa turned it around for, for good, like I read the chapter 6, read it all. Take it from 4. No, start from 2. If, in order for you to understand why Hema wanted Mordecai died. And why Hema wanted the entire Yahudim, the entire people of the book in the land of Babylon. Why did they want all of them to die? Why did he want to commit this genocide? So you will see that, but Abba Yawa said they met it for evil. Then Abba Yawa began to ask me, if they don't met it for evil, how can I turn it around for good? So that was the question. You see, Joseph, the brother met it for evil. How did he turn it around? So enemy must met it for evil in order for Abba Yawa to step in and turn it around 
for our good. Now Genesis 12, 3. He said, whosoever that blesses you will be blessed. And whosoever that causes you will be cursed. He also asked me this question again. If they don't curse you, how am I going to curse them? How am I? Because that is automatic return back to sender. As I'm doing the message now, doing this message now, somebody will just be cursing me. For unaware, how bad your one will be hippie their own causes upon their own head. I don't even need to cast a ban. I don't even need to play no role at all. Whosoever that wish me blessed, I bet you will also be blessed there without my knowledge. Whosoever that causes me, he himself will be cursed there without, he will be returning their own causes upon their own head in seven ways, like the case of the car. Mm? Him, when he died, he planned, and he was aware that, you know, wicked spirit of killed, 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 is just moving around. Until I bet you will turn it around and put it upon him as head, and his ten sons go down also. Now, uh, Acts chapter 60, he say, hey, rise and shine. So if you were not once being cast down, how can you rise? Enemy must drag you somewhere in order for Abayewa to step in. Whatever enemy put on the table, that is what Abayewa is going to use to work with you. And work, it's, gonna, it's, it's in two ways. That is double-edged sword. It will cut you free. It will cut the other one to destruction. The one that wants you die. So, so for you to rise, which means enemy first cast, the ones cast you down. He said, for your light has come. So which means your last was once disappeared. Enemy once switch it off. So in order for Abbey was to turn it on, which means the enemy once switch off that light. So that is it. So when enemy, enemy, when enemy is switching off some light and uh, casting, doing some casting down, it is to the glory fact. It is for you to be promoted, for you to be ele elevated. And for the light to shine. So when they're off the light, no worry. I bet you what definitely is going to own its back. For when it on its back, this one is going to be more, um, you know, brighter than the, the one the, the, the one switch off. Now Psalm 23, ah, uh ah. -uh. Psalm 23, verses 4, ah, uh ah, -uh, and 5, ah, uh ah. -uh. He said, if enemy is not there, so where... Oh, oh, in the presence of who am I going to set the table? Uh, uh, if you don't first or once or walk through the shadow of the valley of death, how am I going to bring you back? Like Mother Car. In the case of Mother Car, of course, all the Yahudims, these are the, uh, these are they that once walked through the shadow of the valley of death. Or they did not lift their voice unto heaven. And Yahweh not turn it around for life. Now you want bless you want bless you. of course enemies happy is gonna lion is gonna you know come out from their hiding places and want to you know tore you into pieces but I bet you what said that is it that that, that that is not what they surround you for I only allow them to surround you in order for me to bless you in their presence only in their presence that table will be set only in their presence that overflowing blessing will come like Mordecai in the presence of Emma. I bet you was turn it around like Queen Adassa in the presence of a uh, you know his uh, high, uh, enemy in the land of slavery. She now became queen of the most powerful king of those days, King Ahasuerus. It was the most powerful. Yes, when it turned like this, I bet you what was turning it around. Second Kings chapter one. What happened? Ah uh ah. -uh. Uh, they must met it for evil for Abayawa to turn it around. Like uh, Adonijah uh, stand by Beth, thought he holds the kingdom. But by election, he was not the owner of the kingdom. The throne belongs to Solomon. The throne belongs to Solomon. So Adonijah claimed because he was the firstborn by Beth, okay, thought I hold the throne. It belongs to me. No one can get it off my hand. Hey, le, 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 le. Hey, na, 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 na. But you want to say, you can't make me a liar. Christian, you want to make Yahweh a liar? By saying Yahweh reject his own people and not choose you the pork eating. Whereby they will be saying that uh, uh, because the Yahudim and the Yisrael rejected their king and the kingdom is already being taken, taken away from them. And it's being given to you the Gentiles, the pork eating, the sun worshiper. The Paiwan typer, disgrace typer, and shame typer, rebellious people, witchcraft on this planet. How can you say Abayuwa rejected his own people? You are now his own people. 
Bro, you should have known what you came into the kingdom for. You only came to save the people of the book. That is Romans chapter 11. You only came for that reason. You can never take their stand because you are poor. <laughs> you are a lady, you know. So, that is what Adonijah taught. That uh, <laughs> he holds the throne. Uh -uh. I bet you want to say, no, you can't make me a liar. I give it to Solomon. And when that of Solomon took place, the earth shook. So go and read the second case chapter 1. So this was the question was just throwing at me. Deuteronomy 7.14. Ah, ah. All the scriptures are there for a reason. You are asking for healing. Heal me. So if you are asking, wish me the enemy throw sickness at, at you. Like uh, the, we are giving Deuteronomy 7.14. I bet what I'm gonna take away all sickness from you. And I will not put none of the Egyptians' evil diseases, you know. Rather, I'm gonna take it away from you and put it upon them that hate you. So anyone that hates you is in great danger. Anyone that says he hates you, sorry, you hate me, you can't spare. Oh no. I bet what will remove that spare heap it on you now in seven ways. This is the nature of this feast to return back to sender. And this was all the question about your wife keep throwing at me throughout the night. If they don't do it this way, then how can this happen? If this doesn't come like this, how can I move? Okay, how? So in order for that table to be set, just leave the enemy to, you know, let them manifest quick, quick. That was why Yahushua said unto Judah, the skyrod. He said, whatever you have to do, do it quick, quick, fast, fast. Because you must play your role. And you are here for that reason. If they don't despise you, how can he honor you? If they don't reject you, how, how, how can he turn it around for them to say, Oh, we are sorry. We never knew. We are sorry. Okay. So it always, you know, I bet we keep bringing all these questions and say, for this positive to take place, which means the enemy have to release release the negative part in order for him to, you know, okay, yeah. Turn it around. That's it. That's it. Okay, I quote that already. Isaiah chapter 4 through chapter 9. Go and read it. Isaiah 61, verses 7 through 8. It says, instead of shame, it's double blessing. Instead of disgrace, it's double honor. Why is it double? That is the former and the latter way. Okay, now maybe this year I should have been on top. Enemy came to put, or, okay, last year or this year, okay, because we are still in 2022 according to Bible. That is the year was calendar. Now, last year or this year I should have been on top. Mom has been on top of the mountain, must be seen by all. Okay, now enemy keep dragging and said, no way, you, you, you know they go nowhere. You goes nowhere. You must remain here. You must remain here. Okay, now let me say, let me drag it back to five or seven years ago. A place I should have been. How about you? What's still going to give me that place? Even though enemy delay it to this very year or to next year. How about you? What will give me the blessing of that time? And it will also give me the, it's going to, that is the double. He will bless you because you are already blessed. He will bless you the blessing. He will give you the blessing of that time. Therefore, what they hinder or what they took from you for that seven years, how about your wife is going to put package all together and give it to you? So, let's say it's supposed to pay you uh, 1,000 euro seven years ago. Now, this year, the battle is over. It can't also come and still give you that 1,000. No. He's going to multiply it. He's bringing it back to you now in double fold. That is what they made double, double, double blessing. Okay, double blessing. Now, Yahushua said in John chapter 11, verses 3 and 4, Yahushua said, This temptation is not unto death. Like Mordecai, like the people of the book in the land of Susha, the temptation was so huge. The, 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 you know, the panic was so huge. The fear was so real. The temptation, the persecution. We are so real. But, it never leads unto death. 
so let's read it read here i quote already i quote it already john 11 3 and 4 and therefore his sister sent unto uh, sent unto him say and then i behold he whom thou lovest is sick for when Yahushua heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of Yahuwah that the son of Yahuwah might be glorified thereby. You see, enemy thought they are doing something so wicked and so painful. But Abba Yahuwah will allow them to be doing it. But he said it's not going to end you in death, but they will know that Lazarus will go down. But what happened? Four days. What happened? Four days he resurrected back to life. Do you know the huge glory? Do you know what that means? Do you know how great that glory is? Do you know the eyes the enemy is going to be using? You know, when they see, they say, eh, this person came back from death. Okay, so let's also put that one aside. He said it is for Abba to be glorified. And it is for the Son of Man to be glorified. So any situation of Agagite, because Agagite is everywhere, of Ema, Ema is everywhere, of Amalekite, Amalekite is everywhere. Abba Yahweh said it's not unto death. Mm -mm. But for him himself to be glorified, and for his son also to be glorified. So he said they made it for shame. He himself is going to turn it around for good. For double blessing, Isaiah 61, verses 7 and 8, is for double blessing. Whatever, whatever the enemy took away there is coming back in double fold, double blessing. And the case of Job, he said, Abba, you want to give him double for his trouble. Enemy thought it was evil, but Abba, you want to give him double for that trouble they caused him. So let me be sure for the second Kings chapter 1. It's good to listen to the voice of the Ruach HaKodesh. He just dropped it in my heart. It's not second kings, it's first king. Yes, and I cost track, it is true. So first kings chapter one, read it all, first king. You're going to see whereby Adonijah was elevating himself above the very one Abba Yawah has already chosen. Abba Yawah now said, you can't make me a liar. He holds the throne, he now gave it to the rightful owner. So Christian, you're going to be demoted and the rightful owner is the people of the book. Stop your nonsense. Stop your noise making. So it's the nature of this feast, okay? Every Emma needs to go down. Thank you, Abba, for you have already taken care of all my Emmas, all my Agagites, and all my Amalekites. Thank you, Abba. It, the, the celebration begins now. Hallelujah. I love you, Abba, in your mighty name. Amen. Okay, family, we are still on it. It's today, tomorrow, and on Monday. Okay? It's just two days. Celebration. Eating, eating, eating. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba. Love you so much. Okay, family. Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah.